Hello and welcome back to DIY Perks. In this video we'll be making some really charming mushroom lights. As you can see they look pretty magical, yet are still quite organic up close. This is a very fun project and the method we'll be using allows you to get really creative with your designs. For example, you can make warm and cosy red mushrooms, or mysterious eerie white ones. Likewise, the styles can also be varied my personal favourite being bracket fungi imitations. So to make some mushrooms, we'll need these tools and materials. Most of these can be found in your local hardware store, and there's a list in the description for easy reference. We'll be using flat SMD LEDs for this project, as they have a much wider beam angle than normal LEDs, and are usually much brighter. This means that the mushroom domes will be lit up much more evenly, although you can achieve a similar effect with normal LEDs by simply chopping off the tips. SMD LEDs can be bought individually, but they are much less common, so what we'll be doing is removing some from a cheap LED strip. This works out quite well, because it also makes them easier to solder. When choosing your LEDs, it's a good idea to go with a colour that matches your final mushrooms, as it will help them look more vibrant. For example, if you're making red mushrooms, going with red LEDs would be a good idea. So we'll simply cut around the LEDs to remove them, and trim down the ends. Now we can solder them up. As we'll be powering the LEDs with a battery pack that takes three AA batteries, we need to solder a resistor in series with each LED, so that they won't get fried with too much voltage. To work out what value resistor we need, we can take the LED's required voltage and subtract it from the battery pack's voltage. Now we can divide the answer by the LED's required current, and then move the decimal point three places to the right, which gives us the ideal resistor ohm rating. Using this simple sum, we can reconfigure this project to work with a variety of different voltage sources, such as 5 volts from a USB port or phone charger. If you don't know your LED's required voltage and current, you can use this chart to get an approximate value. So now we've got our resistors, we can solder them to the LED's, but first we'll bend one end of a resistor's leg over, making a right angle, and then bend it back up again like this. Now we can solder either end of an LED to this notch. The little antenna sticking up will act as a support for a mushroom dome later. Now we need to get a length of thin wire, no less than 20cm long, and solder one end of it to the other side of the LED. Now we can bend the resistor's leg inwards towards the centre of the LED, and twist the extra wire around it, so that things are kept neat. As the resistors are what will give our final stems their strength, they need to be long enough so as not to limit the height of our mushrooms. So to make them a bit longer, we can extend them with some stiff wire. I got mine from some spare resistors, although it is available separately as steel wire. The last thing to do is solder on another length of thin wire to this extension, and that's the electronics of the stems completed. Now with the tricky bit done, we can start working on the mushroom body, which is where things get quite fun. What we'll need for this are some watercolour paints and some clear silicon. This clear silicon is usually used for sealing edges in bathrooms and kitchens, and it's extremely cheap to buy. As it's pretty sticky until it dries, try not to get any on your fingers, as it can get a bit messy if you do. Now if you do get some on yourself, use some white spirit to remove it, as soap doesn't cut through it very well. To give the silicon some colour, we can mix it with some of the watercolour paints. A good mixing surface is an old plastic carton lid, as it can be thrown away after use. Now I quite like natural colours for these mushrooms, so I'm going to go with a nice reddish brown colour, but you can of course use whatever colour you like, depending on what style you're going for. Once the first batch is mixed up, we can transplant it to some cling film, and place an LED stem on top and then fold over the cling film, with the stem as near to the edge as possible. Now we can mould the silicon around the resistors and wires. It's pretty easy to get a good defined finish. After leaving them for around 3 hours to dry, we can peel off the cling film, and then pull off any straggly bits from the stem. We're now left with a nice neat stem, that can be bent into different positions. So now we can prepare the base, making it ready for the stems. To make it, we'll need something we can drill into, like wood or maybe tree bark. 
The base will contribute a lot to the final look of the lights, so it's worth going with something that looks decent. So all we need to do is get a drill bit that's a similar width to our stems and then use it to make some holes through the base. The positioning of these holes is fairly important as we want to mimic how real mushrooms grow, so it's worth looking at some photos for some inspiration. Now we've made the holes we can push through the stem wires, but before inserting the stem itself we can place a blob of silicon over the hole which will glue the stem in place when it gets pushed in. After we've glued in all our stems we can start working on the mushroom domes. The process is very similar to how we made the stems, so we'll mix up some more silicon and blob it onto a piece of cling film, and again fold over the cling film, but this time with the blob in the middle rather than the edge. Now we can mould it into a mushroom dome shape. To get a good defined edge it helps to pinch from the outside inwards. Although it's possible to mould it into a dome shape using only your fingers, wrapping it around something does help a lot. I used a knife handle, but a small bouncy ball should also work. If you're going for particularly small mushrooms, you could even use the bottom of a pen. Once we're done we can hold it up to the light to get a preview of how it will look. Variations and blotches are a good thing as they'll help the mushroom look particularly organic. Again, once they're dry we can clean up the edges, and now they're ready to mount onto the stems. Now, mounting the domes too close to the LEDs results in a bright spot in the centres of the domes, so we need to make sure there's sufficient space between the domes and the LEDs for the light to be distributed more evenly. To do this we can get some more stiff wire from, say, some cable ties and bend it into a circle that will fit nicely inside the domes. Now before soldering this support onto a stem we can cut out a piece of tissue that's larger than one of the domes, make a hole in its centre and then push it down over one of the stems. Now all we need to do is solder the support to the antenna of the stem and then pull up the tissue and wrap it around the support, using some silicon to glue it in place. Now we can add some more silicon on top and squash on the dome. The tissue helps not only to hide the wires from view, but it also spreads the light and looks great from underneath, mimicking a real mushroom. Now all we've got to do is wire up the stems to the battery pack. As LEDs need the correct polarity to light up, we'll test each of the wires before soldering them up. To keep things neat we can use some electrical tape or heat shrink. As my base couldn't stand up reliably, I glued a stone to the back to keep it upright. If you want to avoid any visible wires, you could glue the battery pack to the back instead, which would do a similar job. Now we can turn them on and admire our handiwork. An extra bonus of gluing the battery pack to the back is that it allows you to mount the mushrooms onto a wall without any visible wires. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, don't forget you can get really creative with your designs. These uh, bracket fungi, which are my personal favourite, were made by moulding the domes to the shape of the wood and then not adding any silicon to the very short stems underneath. Let me know in the comments what styles or colours you might try. And uh, if you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already. I uh, hope I see you in my next video where I'll be showing you how to make a one-click automatic backup system which keeps your data very safe because backups are made much more regularly due to its ease. Alternatively, you might want to check out my previous video in which we go through the process of making an insanely bright 1000 watt equivalent LED flashlight. And uh, this is one of my favourite projects I've done so far on the channel, um, so uh, if you've not seen it yet, it's worth a watch. Other than that, I'll uh, see you next time. Bye for now.